Hi, I'm Abby, and in this short video, I'm going to teach you some of the concepts behind Pivotal Tracker, an award-winning project management tool. The first thing to know is that Pivotal Tracker isn't one-size-fits-all software. While some people do use it their own way, we think it works best when paired with our process, which we'll share in this video. This video is for people who've heard about Tracker and want to try it out, but haven't worked on a team with other Tracker users, and may not know the workflow. In this video, we won't deal so much with the software. Instead, we'll focus on the process behind Pivotal Tracker. We built Tracker because too many planning tools are bloated and get in the way of getting things done. The Tracker philosophy embraces simplicity. Tools should make managing projects easier rather than creating more work. Pivotal Tracker is different from other project planning tools in that it's less about creating a set of prescribed goals and more about tracking what you're actually doing, how far along you are into a project, and what's left to do. The Pivotal Tracker process includes a number of steps, gathering requirements, breaking tasks down to the right size, estimating their complexity, prioritizing the stories in order, writing code, and then confirming that it's been done to the product owner's satisfaction. Gathering requirements. At the beginning of a project, before coding starts, the product owner and developers collect features and requirements and organize them into a backlog. The right level of detail for these coarse-grained stories is more or less something that can fit on an index card. Don't worry about fine-grained details. We'll get to that soon. While stories will continue to be added and edited over a course of a project, the bulk of the backlog is often written during an initial planning session. It's usual to start a project with a full backlog. Story breakdown. After high-level concepts are captured on index cards, they're turned into the basic unit of work and tracker, the feature story. For example, an index card with shopping cart written on it is a great placeholder to have a conversation about cart functionality, who can use it, and notions like user, item, session, and cart. That index card might be refined into a story like, as a user, I can add an item to my cart. Now that the story is discrete and actionable, it can be estimated by the developers. Given a backlog of estimated stories, the product owner can prioritize the work, the developers can write code, and the product owner can do story acceptance once the features are written, closing the loop and ensuring that everyone's work has resulted in deployable working software. Estimating Stories Once written, developers will estimate the effort involved in completing each story, because developers are much better at estimating the complexity of a problem than the time it takes to complete that problem. Using the powers of two scale, stories are estimated as easy, one point, medium, two points, hard, four points, or so big that they need to be broken down more, eight points. Smaller stories tend to contain less uncertainty and are easier to estimate accurately. So we'll always try to break large stories down into multiple smaller stories. Prioritizing stories. Once stories are estimated, the product owner moves them to the backlog to prioritize them in order of importance. Stories at the top of the backlog are the most important and will be worked on first. As the needs and priorities of a project change, the product owner will continually tend and adjust the backlog to reflect current project priorities. Building software. The developers will work on the stories in order, pulling the top story off the backlog, delivering it, and working on the next one. This is where the bulk of the work gets done. Because it's risky to deploy changes directly to a live production site, most projects have some sort of staging environment where we can test out new features. Tracker has separate steps to indicate the coding is finished and the feature has been delivered to the staging environment. Changes will not be deployed to the production environment until after story acceptance. Story acceptance. The product owner and the developers will sit down together for story acceptance. There should be a handful of delivered stories ready to try out. The product owner will use the software. They should be the one with their hands on the mouse and the keyboard and confirm it does exactly what the story specifies. If the implemented feature meets the requirements detailed in the story, the product owner accepts the story. It's then considered done, the date of acceptance is recorded, and its points contribute to the iteration's velocity. If the feature does not satisfy the requirements, the product owner rejects the story and indicates the reason that it was not accepted. 
The story returns to the top of the backlog, and developers will pick it up as the next available story. Iterations and Velocity All the steps we just discussed, feature and requirement gathering, story breakdown, estimation, prioritization, coding, and acceptance make up a single iteration. Usually, an iteration is a week. In each iteration, Pivotal Tracker measures how many story points are completed, and the average of the last three iterations is called Velocity. Pivotal Tracker uses Velocity to automatically separate the backlog into emergent iterations. For instance, if the team completed 9 points last week, 10 points the week before, and 11 points the week before that, Velocity would be set at the average, 10 points, and the next iteration would contain the top 10 points worth of stories in the backlog. Because emergent iterations are automatically calculated without any extra work on the part of the product owner, the team always has an up-to-date metric that accurately reflects how much is getting done. In addition to the backlog, you'll see a few other panels in the Story view of Pivotal Tracker. The current panel shows the part of the backlog that will be done this iteration. The ice box is where stories are created and where they stay until they're prioritized. The Done panel shows delivered work. So the life cycle of a typical story would include being written and estimated in the ice box, then moved to the backlog as it's prioritized. Eventually, it'll rise to the top of the backlog, for example, the current panel, and once the feature is implemented, the story will move on to the Done panel upon acceptance. So now you've learned a little about Pivotal Tracker. Let's recap. We'll start off by capturing requirements and breaking them down into stories. There's usually a big push up front to create a backlog, but stories will be added throughout the life of a project. This is done by the product owner and the developers. The next step is estimating stories. This is done by the developers, who use an arbitrary point-based scale to assess stories based on complexity. Next, the product owner will prioritize the stories. They'll fill the backlog with the most important stories down to the least important stories, continually dragging and dropping them into order that reflects current project priorities. Then, developers will work on the stories, finish them, and deploy them to a staging environment. As often as possible, developers and the product owner sit down together for story acceptance. Accepted stories will be moved to the Done panel, the points will be added to Velocity, and rejected stories will return to the backlog. On Monday, the next iteration will begin and the cycle repeats. In this way, Pivotal Tracker helps people manage projects transparently and realistically, with the team reacting to changing needs and delivering working software. We've found this process makes building software efficient, sustainable, and fun. So thanks for watching this video. If you have any questions, suggestions, or comments, we'd love to hear from you. Please follow us on Twitter for news and updates, or drop us a line at community.pivotaltracker.com.